everybody. Hello, hello. Sterling Marsh, and this is Kingdom Road. With yours truly. I'm sorry uh, I wasn't able to do my uh, uh, broadcast yesterday. There was some technical issue with Facebook. I don't know what it was, what that was all about, but I couldn't get on. And I, c I couldn't do my live, I think. So, but here we are today. I'm a day late, but God is never late. He's always on time. And we will keep on up. Give you a lot of good information today about a very important issue. And our subject matter for the day is why does God want us to have his salvation? Why? We probably have always thought that it was all about deliverance from sin and eternal life. And, but all of those things are attributes of salvation. They are not the end desire that God has. They are all a, a means to another end. And we're going to discuss that today. Okay? Why does God want us to have His salvation? And before we get started, we want to say a little prayer. So let's bow our heads in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. And we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise for what you did on that cross for us, Lord God. For your giving back to us what you had originally given to us by the Father. Your sacrifice, Lord, was just you doing what you had to do for your family. Restoring us back to sons of God's status. So I thank you, Lord God, that you have caused me and many others to know and understand this most important fact about ourselves. And in order for us to be anything successful in you, we must know this. So Father, use me today to explain this skillfully as I can, let your Holy Spirit speak now, in the mighty name of Jesus, and then may you get all the glory and honor from this day, in Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, why does God want us to have a salvation, now you know I always have to say, please share, please share, please share, okay, share this information, please, please, you don't understand, you may not understand how important it is that you give this information to people. And you, you don't have to keep to worry about whether this information is correct or authentic. I'm giving you lots of scripture. You can research. And I always tell you, if you can, if you have the time, if you are in a place where you can do it, open your Bible now so that you may go and read the scripture as I read them. Okay? I'm going to move. I'm not going to move too fast so you can have the opportunity to do that. Because I want you to see the truth, the evidence. This is not my opinion. The Bible says that many teach for doctrine the commandments of men, meaning many of the people who are out there in these public teaching, they are only teaching their opinion. They're teaching for doctrine, God's doctrine, their commandments, not God's commandments, their commandments, in other words, their opinion. And that's all they're doing. And that's why the world is in such a state today. You know, we saw something at the United Nations this week. Oh my goodness, I'm going to speak on that soon. Okay. The image of the beast. But, you know, there's not as much significance to it as a lot of people are making it, you know. Because the beast isn't going to come in, 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 a, in a statue. It's, 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 it's a spirit. Okay, so we're going to talk about it another time. Though. But the world is messed up because... The information they have been given is given is incorrect. So share this information so people will have the correct understanding of the kingdom of God. Okay? So, like I always say, this is my CD. You can get it on any of the social media sites, Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify, iTunes. See that? This kingdom, Sterling Mark. Man, listen, I want you all to give this album a chance. You will love it. Okay, you will love it. I'm making progress towards soon having a show on on the air, on the airwaves, and you're going to be hearing a lot of music from that during those shows. So you all pray for me that I will get on TV and on the radio soon. Okay, I'm working on that, and God is going to make that come to pass. I'm telling you, all, ain't nothing going to stop that. Okay, I speak that into the atmosphere, and I'm not worrying about so-called spirit of backlash that some people like to talk about. But that's nonsense, okay? But 
we're going to get right into this and please share man okay and um pray for me like i say and, and that i get through this as skillfully as i can and, and, and without any mistakes and so let's go right into it now why does god want us to have his trouble what's the purpose of it why does he feel it's so important for us that he would die for it what do we actually gain from acquiring it other than eternal life or redemption from sin. Let me give you the, sub, the definition of salvation. Okay, let's go with the Google first. Google says, salvation is the preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. Okay, that's salvation definition according to Google. Preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. This is the theological definition though. Okay, this is closer to what the Bible says. Salvation is deliverance from sin and its consequences believed by Christians to be brought about by faith in Christ. Now, I gave you the Google definition and I also gave you the general theological definition. They're both incorrect. They're both incorrect. Salvation is far deeper than that. It's not simply deliverance from sin. Deliverance from sin and its consequences, as the theological definition says, is just a means to an end. God had to deliver us from sin and its consequences so that he could give us back something else, something far greater than just, have, than, than just existing without with, with forgiveness of sin. There's something far greater than that. But we're going to get into that. So, after we obtain it, then what? Salvation. Why was this so important to an all-knowing God? Since everything he does is for his purpose, that means then, since everything God does is for his purpose, that means salvation wasn't really for our, our purpose. It was for his purpose. It was something that he was doing for himself. Because everything God does is for him. It's for his, everything God does is for his purpose. We are involved in it, but it's for him. He was doing something for himself. He wasn't just doing something for us, as the world has taught us, okay? Since everything he does for his purpose, what does he gain from it? Okay, let's go. Believe it or not, salvation has less to do with our lives on this present earth than we understand. God does not grant it to us simply to have a successful existence on earth. Our time on earth is basically a blink, a flash of lightning compared to our existence as a whole. See, we, we put so much into this life and we get so stressed out over this life, this little 70, 80 years, maybe 90, 100 of you blessed. And we go through all kind of, uh, uh, of, 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 of stresses, high blood pressure, hypertension, and some people committing suicide because they, you know, the, the, the things that they encounter in life. That, I mean, you taking your don't don't listen. Don't you ever think about taking your life? There is much more to life than this earthly life. Okay, our existence as a whole is greater than this 70, 80 years. This 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 seventy eighty years is like a whisper, a blink, compared to eternal life. Okay, so don't let this life stress you up. You deal with it, whatever comes your way, you deal with it, but you must be in God, okay, so that you can get the best out of it, and still, there's much more to it than on this side. Okay, but he promises that he will give you a blessed life if you serve him, okay? If you, take, if you give yourself to him, he will do that for you. But there's much more that he will give you when he gives you salvation, okay? Too often folk achieve salvation and then take up residence in a mundane, repetitive life where very little is achieved for God. Their main reason for acquiring it to begin with is to avoid hell. Do, do you believe that? Yeah, mo most people only give themselves to Christianity to, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a fire insurance. <laughs> insurance from the fire. Basically never quite understanding this new status they have been blessed with. We become so religiously minded 
that we are no heavenly good. Most people who get saved only get saved. They don't do nothing else. They go to church and they help out a little bit around the church, but they don't truly do any real work for God himself. They won't go out and witness. They won't go out and evangelize. They won't teach this word if they know it. And I suspect in many cases people just really don't understand it. Because not everybody's going to understand it. You have to truly give yourself to God to understand His word. And that's, that's just the way it is. Truly give yourself. It's not enough just to say you're saved. Okay, and to go through the through the motions of of, of, of of the things they tell you to do in church, you know, confess and, and, and give your life to Christ. That's not enough. He asks you to do certain things. And what did he say? If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So the things he asks you to do, and the most important thing he asks believers to do is to go, he said, into the world and take the message of my kingdom. Like what I'm doing right now. He asks every believer to do that. And every believer can be qualified to do that by giving yourself to him. He will teach you what that means, what his kingdom means. You don't need to learn it from anybody. God said, I will have no one to teach you, but I will put my word on your heart myself. You don't need no man to teach you this word. The only thing that I'm doing is, is, is recalling to your memory, those of you who know the word, what you've already read. You may not have understand it fully, understood it fully, that's why I'm here, to help you understand it a little bit. But you should know this stuff that I'm telling you. And I'm not going to give you anything that's not covered in the Word of God. Okay? But most Christians that are like that, they don't, they don't really do anything. They just get saved and that's it. They sit in church every week. They go through the same thing every week. Repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. Do the same things every week. They don't change anything. And when, it, and when it's time to do real work, they really don't don't want to get involved because they, they, they may not just not have the confidence that they truly can teach and I understand that you know. but you can if you allow yourself to be taught by the one who gives you knowledge the truth of all things and that's the Holy Spirit the Bible says he will lead you into all truth true relationship with God is to have the Holy Spirit and he will put into your mind everything you need to know and to teach okay like I say, the fact is salvation is a process toward a higher goal. Okay? It was necessary for man to be returned. Listen now. It was necessary, salvation, for man to be returned to the God status as he was created to be. It wasn't about God. Salvation is not about God saving you from sin. That's a part of the process towards a greater goal. That's a means to an end. He had to remove sin from you. Okay? To retu return to God as his lost family. That's what God was after. Okay? The story of the prodigal son, we all know of it. The son who was raised in a family that had everything and, he, and at some point he got kind of selfish and he wanted to have all his inheritance before it was time to receive it and he said father give me everything you have for me now let me go let me let me go see the world and he went out there he left his father he left his family he left his father went into the world and soon found out that it wasn't all that he thought it would be and so we had to end up returning to his father after he realized that what he was experiencing out there, his father had a, a, a billion times that for him. A billion times a better existence than that for him. And, and so he returned. And that's what God wants us to do. Return. We came from him. He wants his family back. When Adam sinned, Adam left the father to sin. Sin is a separation from God. And so God did what he had to do. He sent his son to save us from sin so that we could be returned to him. He wants us back. Okay? Let's go. Let's keep going. 
The story of the prodigal son as I said is literally all about what God is and has been doing since Eden. Restoration. Jesus paid the necessary price to make this possible via redemption. This is what it says in John 1 and verse 12. But as many as received him, Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. That's what he was after. Not to save you from sin. Saving you from sin was a part of the process. He wanted to return you to being a son of God. Back to the God, to the family of God. Back to the Father. That's what God sent him to do. The Father sent him to do. To return you back to your status as a son of God. Okay? Rescuing you from sin was just a part of the process. Okay? Redemption, which grants us salvation, as in Christ, that's what he did, removed the impediment of the blemish from sin. Remember that word blemish? That's where we, we, we always say, that, that when, when God asked the Israelites for a sacrifice, he always would say, get me a goat or a sheep without blemish. Without blemish. Okay? That means it couldn't have any, any, anything that was wrong with it. No sickness, no, nothing. No broken leg, or it couldn't be, you know, blind or anything like that. Okay? But for a human, blemish is sin. Because animals don't have sin. Their blemish is physical, physicality or physical illness. For a human, a blemish is sin. Okay? So, he wanted to remove the, the impediment of the blemish from sin, which created a barrier. This is why he wanted to remove the sin. A, which the sin created a barrier toward the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You see, as long as we are sinful, we can't have the Holy Spirit. As long as we are willingly or willfully sinful, okay, we cannot have the Holy Spirit. Okay, as long as we are out there willfully sinning, we cannot have the Holy Spirit. Even though but the believer still sins, but the believer sins unintentionally and ignorantly and emotionally. Paul said, sometimes we allow our old nature to get the best of us. And even though we don't want to do it, we still find ourselves doing things that we don't want to do. But it's not us, he says, it's our old nature. Okay, so, but willful sinning stops the Holy Spirit from indwelling us. Okay, and it's the Holy Spirit that gives us our sons of God status. Okay? Which occurred, first occurred, when God breathed him, the Holy Spirit, into the first man, Adam, making him a son of God at his creation. But it was lost via the sin he committed when he ate of the fruit, the forbidden fruit. Remember when God made Adam, he breathed into him. He said to himself, God, the Father. Well, actually it was God the Son that did that. God the Father created the Son, and the Son created us. And he said, let us make man in our image and likeness. And, and then he created man using the earth, and then he breathed into the thing that he had made. And the Bible says, and man became a living soul. Meaning, he became, he was created alive in God, a son of God, a God, a God, a son of God only could be God, you can't be, if you are a son of God, you have to be God, you came from a God, you have a DNA, okay, let's go, let's, let's go, let's roll, God the son, the son now, who was also created, a lot of people don't know that, Jesus Christ was created, Okay. By the Father's authorization, created his brother using the same methodology with which he was created, except man with the use of the earth. Okay? Man was created using the earth. Okay? Jesus was not used, was Jesus, who was the Word before he was Jesus? He was only Jesus when he came to earth. He was the Word. Then God created him. He created him from himself. He was his only begotten son, meaning he was he was he was the only son God made directly from him. Okay? 
we were created utilizing the earth. We also came from out of God. Because God breathed into Adam. Okay? And that's how Adam was created a God as well. Okay? And that's why Jesus went to the cross to restore that back to us. So that by him dying on the cross and removing the impediment of the blemish of sin, we can receive the Holy Spirit that, that God breathed into Adam to make him a son of God. We could become now sons of God. And I just read you the, the scripture. But as many as received him, to them, to them, Jesus gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Okay. Speaking about Jesus, the word, the Bible tells us in Colossians 1, 15 and 16, listen to this now. He is the exact living image of the unseen God, the firstborn of all creation. The exact living image of God. Does that sound familiar to you? Keep listening. And then he created all things. The Father created him. Listen, the only thing that the Father created was him. The Father never created anything else. The Father only created Jesus, the Word. And the Bible says, then he created all things. Listen to what it says in verse 16. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created and exist through him and for him. That's what Jesus, who was the living image of the unseen God, he was the first of all creation. He was the first thing created, God, the Father created. And then he created everything else. And he created man. Genesis 1 and 26 says, Let us, then God, the Jesus, the word says, Let us make man in our image and likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. And that's what he did. Jesus, the word, and man were both created in the image of God. We are more like Jesus than we think, than we understand. That's why we go through the, all the trials and tribulations we go through. He was the image of God the Father, and man the image of Him, God the Son. We were both made in the image of God. Now, if He was the image of God, and we are the image of God, what does it make us? The same as Him. The same as Him. Not in power. Because He has power. He had power in heaven and on earth. Mind you, we, we do have some authority in heaven now. Okay, we do have some authority. Remember what He told us? He said, whatsoever you proclaim on earth shall be proclaimed in heaven. Okay? We do have some authority. He gave us that authority. Okay, so we do have some authority in heaven as well. That's the legacy of a son of God. He have all of, his power is all power and all authority. We have some authority in heaven. The Bible says, whatsoever you declare on earth is declared in heaven. Okay? But he gave us complete authority on earth. We have some, some authority in heaven, but he gave us complete authority on earth. That, me that means that God took all the authority and, 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 and control of earth and gave it to man. Now, he didn't give us ownership. The Bible says the earth is still the Lord. But he gave us the uh, full authority on earth. He gave it to us. He removed even himself. And that's why he tells us to pray. 
And that's why he, he can do the things he does on us because we are always praying that he does. We pray for his interference on us. Men are always praying for God to do what he has to do. That his kingdom come and his will be done. That's my prayer every day. I don't ask for things. I pray that his kingdom come and his will be done in all my situations because he knows better than me what I need. I can't even think of what I may need in that situation sometimes. So I just say, you know what, God? I don't know what need, what's needed here. Your will be done. Your kingdom come. Okay? And that's that's what he operates on. That's why he said men always ought to pray. Without ceasing. So that I can do what I need to do for you. Because I have given you authority. I need now for you to use your authority that I've given to you and and allow me to come in and do what I need to do for you. Now, you say, how oh, you could say God need our authority to do that? Because God is a God of integrity. He's the one who said, listen to it now, let us make man in our image and likeness and let them, he didn't say let us, he said let them have dominion, complete authority over the earth. Because that's what he wanted. He trusted that man with him, in him, would always know the right thing to do. And that's why when Adam lost him, when he sinned, you see, as long as man did not disobey God, he would always have the Holy Spirit, which gave him his power. But when he lost the Holy Spirit through sin, then God had to do something to get the Holy Spirit back in him. Because why? Because of this declaration. Let them have dominion. That was that couldn't change. Nothing anyone could do could change that. Nothing that man could do, nothing that Satan could do. Man was given dominion. Nobody could change that. Now, it was temporarily lost because of the sin. But that's the, the, the declaration was already made. So it was so God knew what he had to do to give it back. how much God loves you. I'm telling you, you are his child. And the same way you love your child and will do anything, doesn't matter what anybody takes from your child, you will make sure your child gets that back. That's your child. If it costs you your life, you will give that back to your child. Didn't it cost him his life? He gave his life to give you back his child, which you're supposed to have. Let's, move. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay. Jesus made man a son of God just like him. Jesus is only our brother. You know. He's our brother. He's a son. Just like we are sons. Okay, he is our Lord because he is a he is the first. He's the greater. It's something like 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 the ministers in Parliament. The Prime Minister is just the first among the others. That's all. Legal jargon, if you if you check out the definition of Parliament, the Prime Minister is simply the first of the other ministers. And that's why he has the authority. Jesus is the first, the Bible says, the firstborn of creation. He was the first. Okay, and so because he is the first, he has power over the uh, over everybody else. Authority. But it was he who gave us the authority we have on earth. He gave us complete authority to say, listen, okay, I'm the king. But I make you a king now. You are the king of the earth. I'm, a, I'm the king of the heaven and earth. The king of kings. But I won't interfere with what you do on earth. Why do you think the earth is the way it is now? If God, want, if God was to interfere on earth, earth wouldn't be the way it is. Earth wouldn't be the mess it is today if God is to interfere. God does not interfere with the affairs of men unless he is requested by a right-thinking, born-again, true believer in something that has a purpose in him. 
He won't interfere on every in everything we ask for because some things we ask for are missed. He said, "For the things that are in His will, for the service purpose, He will interfere by our request." Okay. So, like I said, Jesus made God, man a son of God, just like Him, with complete authority over the earth as He has in heaven and earth. Power to do so-called impossible things with just a thought. Manifested via speech, just like he did at creation. You remember when God made the heaven and earth? God the Son. This was Jesus doing this now. But Jesus the Son, as the Word, made the earth. From the minute we started reading the Bible, that was the Son, Jesus, operating, making things. By his mouth, declaring it, let there be this, let there be that, let there be the next. And he has given us this same power, he says, whatsoever you declare on earth is declared in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. By this. That's why the Bible tells us. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Careful. Because the power that God gave you of dominion is in your mouth. It's through speech. Just like him. When he spoke it, the world, into being, he gave you that same power to speak things into being. He said, if you believe and not doubt, whatsoever you declare shall be done. Okay? Let's go. This was the Father's original desire for man even before he was created. Okay? The Father had some things in mind before he even created, before he had Jesus created us. And when he created Jesus, this is what he was thinking. This is what Romans 8 and 28 says. This is the Father now. This is what the Father had in mind. Before he even created anything. He said, for those whom he foreknew, in Romans 8 and 29, for those whom he foreknew, that means those he knew before anything was, before anything was created, this is what God was, Father was thinking. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed or made just like to the image of his son so that he would be the son, the firstborn among many believers. I tell you all, we are Jesus Jesus is us. And then the Father made him. The Father put in him the same thought. For those whom he foreknew, he told the Son, you now, now, I made you. Now you go and you make them, your brothers, in the same image of you that I made you. For those whom he found you, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many believers. He put it in the son to make us just like him. So that he, the son, would be the firstborn among many believers. In every way we are just like him. And that's why he came to earth. To restore us because it was him who first made us he came to restore what he had made what Satan had interrupted he came back to earth to put it back in place I told you all in Genesis 1 and 26 he had already declared it and nothing could stop it he had the power to put it back in place he made us sons of God and he had the power to restore us to sons of God's status Satan was no, no, no big deal for him. 
I don't think that, that would, don't have, you may ask, well, why did he take so long to, to, to come to earth to do it? Listen, the Bible says to God, a day is as a thousand years. He wasn't in no rush. He knew what he was doing, and, was, and, and, and it wasn't a problem for those who had already died before he came to earth to restore what he did, you know. Because those who died believing in God also received that salvation even though they had died thousands of years before he came to earth, they were also qualified to receive it because they died in him, God. God's power has no limitation of time and space. He's omniscient, he's omnipresent, he's all-powerful, omnipotent. You need to understand the God that you serve. I'll say you serve. And I'm not doubting whether you serve him or not. But a lot of people who say they do don't truly understand the God they serve. All powerful. There's nothing he can not do. So everything that you that, that you read about in that word was un, was under God's full control. Everything. From the garden, the tree, Satan, all of that was under God's control. He knew what he was doing. I'm going to give you a little bit more information into that. Okay? God the Son, Jesus, the Word, was simply the prototype of a son of God. That's all he was. He was just the first creation of a son of God, and we were made just like him, with the same power, the power to declare things. Remember he told us, if you declare to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, it shall be removed and cast into the sea. He wasn't kidding about that. That's the power that he had. He said, you you got this power in you. I gave it to you. If you don't believe it, keep listening. Man has not comprehended this revelation, believing it to be in the figurative sense. See, that's, that's the main problem that people have with this Bible. They think that God is speaking figuratively. No. You see, just because there are, you, you got to understand something about God, okay? His, it, his reality is not ours. He gave us a little of his reality. And we couldn't even receive that. But for God, and in God, anything is possible. He told us this. So he could say things that seem crazy and impossible, and you think that it's in the figurative sense? No. You know, I've had people say to me when I explain the word, no, you, you, you understand it out of context. No, I'm not understanding it out of context. God's context is everlasting. There is no context in God. Whatever he says is for all eternity. It has no context. When he makes a declaration, it's for all eternity. And, and guess what? When God makes a declaration, not only is it for the, the time present and the time to come, but it, but also, it was also relevant to the time that already passed. He's only just making us aware of it when he says it. That's all he's doing. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What God declares today has always been. The Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. It says that which has been is that which shall be. And that which shall be is that which has always been. There is nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Nothing new. God just makes us aware of things. That's all. There's no context in God. What he declares, that's what it has always been. 
and what he declares to his prophets and his apostles is what it has always been. They're not just saying it for that time. So please, do not allow anyone to tell you you're taking things in the wrong context. You receive God just as he said. If there's one thing I've come to understand about God, it's he is always literal in everything he says. Very deliberate in his declaration. Man's worldly expectations for himself has reduced him to only what his limited understanding can conceive while falling short of what his creator says about him. I refuse to be like that. Mm -mm. And that's why God has given me the knowledge that he has. I don't follow the crowd. I don't follow the crowd. Following the crowd is what has gotten a lot of people in problems and misunderstanding and incorrect knowledge. Don't follow the crowd. Let the, let the Holy Spirit teach you this word. Not men. Let men only bring to your recollection what you have already written, I mean read, sorry, and known from God. That's all they're supposed to be doing when you go to church. It's bringing to your memory what you've already been taught by the Holy Spirit if you are in Christ, that is. Now, if you ain't in Christ, you will never know this, this stuff. Because you could read this Bible a million times and never understand it. You have to have a relationship with God to understand His Word. And I can't tell you without enough. You see, a lot of these modern day preachers and, and pastors are allowing the commentary of modern theologians and even theologians even probably maybe even hundreds of years ago but even a theologian that write anything or any explanation about the word hundreds of years ago just because that he wrote it hundreds of years ago doesn't mean he was correct what does it have to do with God God could give any theologian that existed a thousand years ago and anyone and one that existed they the same revelation if that person if they are both in him and are led, both led by the Holy Spirit but just because someone wrote something hundreds of years or a thousand years ago doesn't mean that they understood what they were talking about doesn't mean that they understood this Bible the men who, who translated this Bible to the different forms how do we how do we know they even knew, knew God at all and how do we know that their explanation, and I'm not talking about the Bible itself, I'm talking about these books that people write about the Bible, or these explanations. Because I've had people say to me, no, um, you got to go by what the theologians have said. No, I don't go by what the theologians have said. I go by what the Holy Spirit tells me. Why? Because I know who I am in God. I don't know who they were. I know that I am in Christ. Without a shadow of a doubt, I know that. Because I am not led by men. I refuse to be led by men. Why should I? When I can be led by God himself? Who said, I will lead you. I will teach you my word, he said. I will have no man teach you, he said, but I will put it on your heart myself. Oh shoot, if I could get that, what I need man to teach me for? See, some of you have leaned too much on the understanding of men who are teaching for doctrine their commandments, not God's commandments, their opinions, in other words. No, I don't want people's opinions. I want God's doctrine, the real stuff. Okay? Let's go. Jesus stated, Man at his creation was given the same glory, the same glory, that the Father had given him, further cementing his status as a God. Remember, the Bible says that he took off his glory when he came to earth to become a man. That means he took off all his heavenly power. He never used his heavenly power. He had power to create worlds. Remember? He created the world, the earth. He had power to create planets. Planets. He left that power in heaven. 
And the Bible says that he gave that glory to us. Listen what he says when he was speaking to the Father in John 17 and 22. Listen carefully now. He said, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. My God. You need to know who you are. You need to understand. And until you understand, you will always think God is speaking figuratively. You will always think the Bible is a fairy tale. You will always say, boy, that's hard for me to receive. Yeah. Because you think it ain't real. This is real. But you got to get to that place, baby, where you can receive it. This is hard for some to receive. I, I, that's what Jesus said. Jesus himself said that. These things are hard for some to receive. Not everyone, see, what do you say? Not everyone can receive this. What did he say in John 7, um, John 7 and 14? He said, or was it Luke 7 and 14? He said, straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to life, which is him. He's the light, remember, the way, the truth, and the light. He said, but only a few will find me. Only a few. Not many can receive this word as God has given it. They will change it to suit their understanding. That's why God tells us over and over, do not lean to your understanding. If you do that, you're already gone wrong. And you're not going to be able to bring yourself back because everything you build on that wrong understanding is going to be wrong. you got to start with me and end with me. Do not go off into your own understanding because you can't understand or because you can't receive or believe that it is how I say. Because you just don't see as a human being how that could be possible. Listen, don't look at things in terms of human possibilities. You are not human. You see, and that is probably the hardest thing for humans to understand, for a human being to understand. A human being is not a human, is, is only, it, it, a human being is a person, a spirit that God has placed into an earthly body. That's what a human being is. Okay? What you see in the mirror is not you. Remember now, you were made in the image of God. God doesn't look like the image in, the, in your mirror. Now, whether or not you believe or receive that is up to you. But he said, if you want to receive God, he said, you were made like me. I only put you in that body so that you could be on earth. That's, that's why I want you. Because I wanted to demonstrate to the principalities and powers in heavenly places my manifold wisdom, the greatness of me. I wanted to see. I could even make a God on earth, he was saying. I could put them in a physical realm. And they would still be God. That's what he wanted to demonstrate to Prince of and powers in heaven. That he could do that. And that's what he did. But the problem is, because we, because of Adam's sin, and because and, and, and we lost the Holy Spirit, and because we have, have so much evidence of man living without God, we think that that's, that's all there is. Mm -mm. We haven't even cracked the surface of what we can do. What we can do. One day, we who truly believe will come to know. But we haven't even cracked the surface. Okay. And then he made a statement after he said, The glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. And then he made a statement proclaiming that there was no different level of love between the Father and him as to what man. He's saying the levels of love that the Father has given to me is the same as what he has given to you. Ain't no different. Both are equal. 
This is what he says in John 17 and 23. He says, I in them. He was continuing with the statement he made in John 17 and 22. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. Okay, he's talking about one in him and the Father. One family. So that the, and the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them, meaning us, as thou has loved me. Same way. He said, you didn't love me any more than you loved them. But they don't know. God's love for his sons, whether it's the first son, Jesus, or the last man, is of the same depth. depth. Because all are of the same DNA. His, the father's. All has come from him. He made the son, and he had this, he authorized the son and commanded the son to make us. We were in him, and he gave us to the, to the son. The Bible says, those who he foreknew. Foreknew, that means before he created anything, he knew us. We were in him. And he gave his son, he created his son, and gave his son the knowledge and wisdom to create us. And make us just like him. The only reason he made Jesus our big brother differently, the sinner, was because he knew God knows all things. He's omniscient, knowing all things. Because he knew that one day he would need a savior. And for that to be possible. He could not be Jesus of sinful earth. He made Jesus different. So that when that thing happened in, the, in, in Eden, that sin, Jesus would not be a part of that. Because he knew that one day we were going to need him to be different. To be born without sin. We were born with sin. Every man after Adam was born with sin. Jesus was created without sin. And we needed him to be without sin. And that's why God made him different. That's the only reason. That's the only reason. Everything else, we are just like him. Like I said, only that his level of power is greater than ours because he is different in that way. He's the first. We are the ministers. He is the prime minister. For those of you in my, sister, in my country, the Bahamas. Or in the U.S., he's the president. We are the, you are the, sec the secretaries. We call them ministers in the Bahamas. That's the only difference. He has greater power than us because he is the first among us. The firstborn among many, God calls him. The first among many. That's all. And the prime minister is called the first among many. The president is called the first among many. Check, check it out. Go look it up. Study some politics and you will see that's exactly what they are called. The first among them. Okay? We were created spirit. Listen to this now. Listen to this. This is very important. This may be some stuff you've never heard before. We, human beings, like I say, I'm only saying human beings because that's who we know after of that. But we, human beings, were created spirit. Just like him. We were put we are, we, are, we are spirits in a dirt body. That's a human being. Humus, humans, humus, and man were put together. Humus means dirt, and man means man. If you put the two together, it's human, dirt man. So we are spirits in a dirt body. That's all. Okay? And we were created a spirit by him, just like him. Given a body to live on earth, like he was given. Remember when he came to earth, he was given a body. And he thanked the Father. The father. He said, thank you, Lord, that you gave me a body. He said, sacrifice you did not want, but you, you gave me a body to come on earth. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing. you got to study this word to understand this, you know. This is a complete revelation. 
But you will read over this over and over and over, and you will never see it if you're not led by the Holy Spirit. You've got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Okay? He had a body, just like us. He was tempted by Satan, like we are every day. But did not give in to the nature of sin as we do. Why? Because of the knowledge he possesses of who we are, us and him. You see, he gave us the same knowledge, you know, that we have, that he had. The only reason he, that he, he doesn't sin, he didn't sin when he was on earth, is because he knew who he was. And he, he offers that same knowledge to us, but we don't believe it. The only reason he didn't sin is because he knew who he was. He knew who, I should say, he knew who we are. He and us. Because we are the same. He knew who we are. And that's why he didn't sin. He knew he was the son of God. He said, no, there's no way I can sin against my father. Because I know who I am is greater than any, any temptation. You know, but we don't know it. Mind you, he's been trying to give it to us for a long time, but he just won't receive it. He won't receive it. Okay. Listen to what King David said. King David gave us a most important message from God concerning man. Okay, and this was Jesus, the word, speaking to King David. King David was being used as a prophet. This is what King David said in Psalms 82, 5 and 8 verse 5. This, this is what he said about us from God. He said, they know not. Listen now. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. When God, uh, when God says darkness, he means ignorance. Devoid of knowledge. That's what ignorance is not stupidity. It simply means you don't know. You just don't have the knowledge. They walk on in, in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Listen. David speaks here about Eden. Okay? When God declared that the earth was now under a curse, when he talked about the earth, the foundation of the earth are out of course, he was declaring that the earth, he was saying that when God declared that the earth was now under a curse because Adam listened to his wife, to lead him into eating the forbidden fruit. That's what God was talking about. That's what David was talking about from God. He was saying, because you're in ignorance and don't know who you are, the foundations of, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. You were given the power, he was saying, to speak things into the earth, to make the earth fall in line with, your, with my purpose for you. He said, ain't no hurricane or tornado or tsunami or tidal wave supposed to hurt you? You have been given the control over these things. Remember Jesus demonstrated it in the boat. Peace. Be still, he said to the wind and the waves. He said, you are supposed to be able to do this. He said, the foundations of the earth are out of course because you are now in ignorance. You don't know who you are. You don't understand the power you have. You can't receive it. And because you can't receive it, the earth is now out of course. Okay? Romans 8 confirms this. The Bible says, listen to what it says about in, in Romans 8. It says that the earth, when Adam sinned, the earth went into a period of frustration and futility. This is in Romans 8. And into a time of pain as in childbirth. Because... The one who was supposed to be leading her and giving her instructions lost his dominion because of sin. Let me tell you something here. Yeah? It total ignorance concerning what we were created to be. Total ignorance. Okay? David goes on speaking God's message in verse 6. He said, I said, listen y'all, I'm giving y'all some deep revelation here today. I said, he said, ye are gods. Indeed, 
all of you are sons of the Most High. David said this thousands and thousands of years ago. Jesus was speaking through him. In verse 7, he said, But nevertheless, you will die like men and fall like one of the princes. You know what those princes was he was talking about? Satan. Satan, listen, before Satan was a fallen angel, Satan was a prince. A prince. Satan was the head of the angels. The chief. A prince. Okay? But he fell. The Bible says, see, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. That's when he tried to come up against God. His demise happened so fast, it was like a flash. You don't, play, don't mess around with God, yeah? And, 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 and imagine, he doing all of this for us. Because he loves us so much. Imagine being on the other side of God. Then, and this, on the side of his disgust, instead of his love. He said, I would put you in a lake of fire. Where you will never, you see, your worm will not die. In other words, the light will never go out of you. You will suffer forever. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth because I have given you something so great, but you won't, you refuse to receive it. He said, since you won't receive these, to choose, choose who you will serve. I've given you something so great, but since you can't receive it, then I, I, what I could do? Listen to me. God don't put you in hell, you know. You put you in hell. God said, choose. Choose. There's a place for those who choose me, and there's a place for those who refuse me. But I'm not putting you in there, he said. I love you too much to put you there. You put yourself there. Because I can't have you with me if you don't want me. If you refuse me, you can't be with me. So there's a place for, see, spirits never die. Once we are, God creates a spirit, it never dies. It'll either live on in hell or live on in the kingdom. But it'll never die. It cannot die. Spirits cannot die. You will never die. That's why I tell you this life is a blink. You have much more life than this little 70, 80 years. You got, you, all, you got all eternity to look forward to. Where you will never cry, never be sad, never want for anything again. On the other hand, you got Satan, you got hell. Where you will never die either. You will suffer for all eternity. You never stop suffering. I can't even imagine how that is. That's unimaginable. I think I can imagine the kingdom of heaven more than I can imagine it. hell. I can't imagine that. Because I, I, usually, you know, when a person does so much suffering, they usually pass away, right? Then, then the Bible says you will never pass away. Your worm will never die. In other words, the life will never go up all of you. Spirits can't die. Only the physical body dies and goes back to the earth. I tell you before, earth is our mother. We came from her and back to her we will go. Remember God went to the earth and took stuff from the earth and joined himself to it, just as a man joins himself to a woman, and made a baby. And that baby was you and me. The earth is alive. How could the earth go into a period of frustration and futility if she wasn't alive? The Bible said this, she went into a period of frustration. Inanimate objects can be frustrated, don't have emotions. The earth has to be alive for it to be frustrated. Read your Bible. Okay? Another significant problem is we saved humans, call ourselves believers, have kept our focus on what happened after the fall. In Eden, 
when God gave up himself to rescue us from that condition, the condition of the fall, that the sinful nature, when what we sh what should be our main focus is what he said and did before the fall. That's what's really important, what he said about it before Adam sinned. You know, our whole focus and, and, and thinking is all about after the fall. I, listen, I, I refuse to think like that. Everything that happened after the fall only happened because of what happened at the fall. If Adam hadn't did what he did, he, none of this, none of this would be read about in the Bible would have happened. None of it. That only happened as a result of the fall. Okay? Let's go back to the beginning. When God created man, he was not creating a human. Humanity is a given proving ground for God, for man. Listen now. That's all it is. This earthly existence is just a proving ground. This is where God gave us to prove who we are for him. Whether we would serve him or mammon. Okay? Him or Satan. A place God gave us to prove who we would serve. The thing you see in the mirror, as I said, is a temporary house of a God who has but one main assignment to prove his love for his creator through trust and obedience. Who created him to be like him. Okay? God created man to be like him. That means to be in God and he in man. To have power like him. To live forever like him. A chip off the old block, as they say, in every way possible. Man is not like God in this concept as he was meant to be. This is also a result of the fall. God thinks, listen to this now. God thinks how man would have been thinking had he not committed the transgression. Because he, man, would have been permanently linked to his creator in every way, including, especially, in his mind, by the Holy Spirit. A God like God. This means the entire infrastructure of earth, everything that we see, would have been different. Because every major invention may not have been necessary or even conceptualized. We wouldn't need planes and cars. The landscape and boundaries of countries would be different for a creature that can move Earth just by speaking. If you could listen, if you could tell a mountain to be removed and cast in the sea, if you could split an ocean, what you need a boat for? You could just drive right from your country to another country, right through the ocean. You wouldn't even need a, you wouldn't even need a car. Because, as a human being, you would be able to fly. But excuse me, didn't Jesus fly? Listen. Various modes of transportation would not be necessary, for with man, anything would be possible, including human flight. Like Jesus as a human, we would move beyond the limitations of gravity as he did when he ascended to heaven. He was still flesh when he did that. Remember now. And he said we could do everything he did. Remember, when Jesus, just before Jesus ascended to heaven, okay, the, remember the, the, the Bible said the disciples saw him looking, sent him, saw him descending up, and the angels asked him, why are you looking up? He say, <laughs> why are you looking up? He said, didn't you want your soul of the Son of Man but ascend to heaven one day? But just before he did that, remember, he told Doubting Thomas, he said, touch me. And even before that, he asked them for some food. He wanted to show them that he was still flesh. See, remember now, he told them. After they crucified him, he said, three days, I will rise. Not by spirit. Not by spirit. He was talking about his flesh. He was saying, I'm going to rise in the same body. Not in spirit. Remember he promised us you will be given a new body. An incorruptible body. He got his body right then. As soon as that three days is up, he got his new body. Why? Because he is the resurrection. 
And so when he when he after he rose, he went and into the city, and he t he asked him. He said, "I'm hu I hungry." He said, "I'm hungry." He said, "Have you any meat?" And he they gave him some meat, and he ate. Spirits don't eat. And then he told Thomas, "Come, Thomas. Come touch me, just so you can see this is me." Hallelujah. This is me, Thomas. Touch me. Ah, excuse me. The revelation is so good. Ah, hallelujah. But he told Thomas, he said, touch me. So you can see, I am flesh. I'm not a spirit. I'm the same thing that you would be one day in a new body. And Thomas touched him and said, yes, Lord, I believe. And then he rose in that same body. He flew away. He rose. He just rose and left. And he said, greater than what I did, you will be able to do. And he wasn't joking. He wasn't joking. So, everything that we see, planes, trains, cars, we wouldn't need any of those things. We'd be able to fly where we needed to go. Just float there. Just with a thought. Just like he did. In flesh. Birds wouldn't have nothing on us. Are you getting the revelation? Are you, 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 are you realizing the concept? Man has only created these things, these mechanical things, out of need. Because he refuses to believe in who he is. But it has become a reality for us. But guess what? The things we can see were created by the things we cannot see. Us. We were created by God who we cannot see. The things we cannot see are more real than what we can see. We made these things out of necessity that we thought was a necessity on a need. But they weren't. That's because, you see, we think we're so great because we make planes. We think we're so great because we make submarines and, 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 and all these great inventions. Okay? Spaceships and rockets. But God said, listen, I created you to be able to go into space without even a suit. If you wanted to. You could explore galaxies if you wanted to. He said, well, excuse me, didn't I make them? Are you just like me? Hmm? I'm outside of time and space. I even had the power to even come into time and space as I wanted. He said, I created time and then I came into it. Can you imagine that? A being who created time went into time to do a work for the thing that he created. Went into a creature that he created to save that creature, Mary. Only God. Only God. And I'm amazed by him, man. Y'all don't know. I, listen, God has filled me with some, no some knowledge that I, I, it, it boggles my mind when I think about it. I'm gonna watch. I might float away too. What? <laughs> Hallelujah! Lord, you something else. Okay. The Bible states that all humanity was in God before we became flesh. Just as we are all in the DNA of our earthly parents, for these earthly bodies, before they conceived us, 
we were always in our father before our birth and he joined himself at our mother earth to bring forth our bodies breathing his spirit into it as the catalyst to make us gods like him made in the image and likeness of God the Son with the same glory bestowing us with all power but over the earth as he has in heaven then he created us as kings with only he the Son of God as King of Kings over us his, his brethren it was he who gave man dominion over the earth with unlimited power similarly to what he had in heaven and with one caveat now this is the important part coming up here okay and he goes, you really listen now. This is the reason why certain things happen to us the way they do. With one caveat. Free will. Free will. Same as with the angels. They also had free will. That's why Satan could have, and the, uh, and the third of the angels did what they did. God gave them free will too. The choice. The ability to choose who they would serve. Free will. Listen. Free will is the most dangerous and defining characteristic of man. As it has the capacity to bring perfection in God or completely destroy our righteous connection with him as it did with Satan. Our ability to choose is the greatest clue as to how God uses our lives in earth to decide our future with him. Please excuse that phone. I should have kept that close to me. Our ability to choose is the greatest clue as to how God uses our lives on earth to decide our future with Him and without Him for all eternity. We believe it's about our earthly lives that never was. What God offers to man is so vast and all-encompassing that man has to qualify himself for worthiness to wield this power through his own ability to overcome his emotions and desires. You see, that's the key. Most human beings cannot overcome their own emotions and desires. That's why they give in to Satan. And, and, and mind you, Satan is so easy to deal with. The Bible says, just resist him. Just resist him. You don't have to do what Satan does. Listen, people like to say the devil may be doing it. That's foolishness. That's a joke. I, 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 I'm sure they mean that as a joke. But there are some people who really say things that I don't mean it. They, they say, oh, is this Satan making me do it? Just Satan. Listen, Satan can't make you do nothing. The Bible says you sin because of the lust of your own flesh. And God is saying if you can overcome that lust, you can be with me. Coupled with his, this love for God, this is the only way man can achieve full God status again. The ability to overcome, the ability to overcome his emotions and desires, and his love for God. That's the only way he can achieve for God says. For all his power, listen now, for all his power, God remains a jealous God. That's something, man. God will not share man with anyone or anything. He must in all things remain first in man's life. This is what it says in Joshua 24 and 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, then choose you this day whom you will serve. And in Joshua 24 and 15, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, sorry, and in Matthew 6 and 24, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye, ye cannot serve God and mammon. God is saying, look here, you can't have me and your own desires. Okay? That are outside of my will. You can't have me and those lusts. You can't give in to me and give in to Satan. You can't have the two. You gotta choose which one you will serve. Okay? When God created man, he did so for himself. Okay? Not for the woman or any other purpose. The Bible tells us that God did not make man for woman. Okay? But he made the woman for the man. 
that God didn't make man for the woman, but the woman for the man. Who did he make the man for? He made the man for himself. In man, he created a being like himself that he would use as an extension of himself for the achievement of the kingdom of heaven through and via the kingdom of God on earth. And I need to say something more about that thing I just said just now. Okay, I, like I explained in my last teaching, I think it may have been last week or the week before. When God created the male man, he placed himself into the male man to make him a God, not the female. He commanded the female to submit herself to the male. Okay. To be led by the male, that's all. So the female gets her salvation through submission to the male. In all situations, talking about adult female male relationships. It doesn't matter what they are, what the situation is, God created man to always be the head, whether it's corporate, whether it's family, whether it's social. It's always for the man to be the head. And that's what he is commanded to be. The female is always commanded to be to submit to the male. Yes, things have completely changed these days and women push now to be the head. That's what it's become. But that's not what that's not God's order. And I know plenty of you don't like me saying that, but I didn't say that. He said that. Like Paul said, for the man was created first, then the woman. And man and as he said in um um what scripture is that? And Second Timothy, First Timothy, one and twenty-three. That Adam was not deceived, but it was Eve that was deceived and committed the transgression. Remember, I tell you all that Adam did not disobey God when he ate the fruit. Adam simply listened to his wife, and that's what God chastised him for. God said, "Because you have listened to your wife." said, God told him, I know you didn't disobey me. Say, but, you, but because you listen to your wife, you're in trouble. Not because you disobey me. He said, but I'm not going to curse you. He didn't say it, but he didn't curse him. He cursed the, the woman because she directly, intentionally disobeyed God. Remember, she, she, even, she, she even remembered what Adam had told her that God had said, not to eat from the fruit. She had that conversation with Satan, and that she allowed Satan to deceive her. But Adam was not deceived by Satan. Adam just trusted his wife and he listened to her. God would tell him, don't you ever trust your wife to give you counsel. He said, your counsel is supposed to come from me, not her. You're supposed to in turn give her my counsel, not her giving you her counsel. I'm not in her. I didn't put my spirit in her. I put it in you. Remember when he, when he breathed into Adam and he made Adam? He didn't breathe into Eve. So only Adam was led by the Spirit. And that's what I meant when I said God made the man for him. He did not make the man for the woman. He made the man so that he could be in the man. He could live in the man. And the man could then give to the woman. That's the order of God. He goes to the man first, to the woman. Okay? So, God was never after earth itself, but about bringing heaven to earth to reverse what it had become because of the fall. Earth has been in turmoil ever since that fateful day in Eden. The original plan of God was to have a race of gods, his sons. I can't even imagine what kind of world this would have been. Wow. In the image of his first son, Jesus the Word, and he, the Word, created man to be exactly like him in every way. The only being, difference being since the fall of man would have to make that choice, since the fall, man would have to make that choice for himself. Whether or not he would receive the status given to him in Christ, his creator and brother. The status that separates those who are in God from those who are not. 
Jesus himself proclaimed the vast difference between the two, those who are in God and those who are not, is otherworldly. This is what he said in John 17 and 14. He said, I have given them thy word. This means to, he was talking to the Father. I have given them thy word. And the world hated them. See, I father you in Christ, and you know people don't like you. Don't worry about that. I know that there are many people who don't like me. Listen, <laughs> I share my teaching online, right? I don't get cursed out from people around the world. They don't even know me. They cur I mean, literally curse out, telling me to do all kind of sexual things to them. Listen, <laughs> I just have to laugh when I read these things. So these people, honestly, they hate God. I never, listen, it's hard to believe it, but there are people on this earth that hate God. You cannot, listen, you cannot trust everybody you meet, especially on that internet. You don't know where, where these people's background is, where they're from, what their history is, what they believe. Look what Jesus said. I have given them, them thy word. And the world hate them, hated them, because they are not of the world, as I am not of the world. He was saying, you see, he, he made us believers the same as him again. You see that? The fact is that God offering back to the believer, the fact is that God offering back to the believer his royal inheritance through his own sacrifice, the fact is, is that God is offering back to the believer his royal inheritance through his own sacrifice, first given at his creation, making him a God again as before the fall in Eden by the first man, God, by the first man, God, Adam. Let me read that again. The fact is that God is offering back to the believer his royal inheritance. We are all, the believer is an inheritor of God and everything that is God. Through his own sacrifice, God the Son, through his own sacrifice, was given back to the believer what was given at his creation. Okay, this is what Adam was given when God created him, everything in God. Okay, full inheritance with Jesus. That, remember, God always talks about in this word that we are uh, joint heirs with Christ. Well, you, you, you know, you can be a joint heir with Christ if he's a brother and you're a brother, if he's a son and you're a son too, right? I tell you, we are of God's family. That's what God is trying to get back to us. Our family position. Not just salvation and, 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 and freedom from sin. But making us kings and gods again. Okay? This is what Jesus said in 10 and 35. John 10 and 35. He was repeating what King David had said. Remember I told you he was prophesying through King David. He said, is it not written? This is Jesus answered them and they questioned him. Then Jesus was doing all kind of good things, right? And Jesus asked them, you see, and they was they was about they pick up stones to stone him. And he asked, he said, I have done many great things, many wondrous things among you. He said, For which one of these things are you trying to stone me? They said to him, He said, Not because of the wondrous things you're doing in them. He said, But because you make yourself to be a son of God, you make yourself equal with God. This is what they had a problem in. But Jesus said unto them and say, Look, is it not written? Because these remember now, these people would be the Sadducees, the Pharisees, they were teachers of the law. They were hard into the law. Okay? And they were hard into the to, to the to the to the scripture. Okay? He said to them, Look, is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are God. He was telling them, You getting all upset because I say I'm a son of God. But excuse me, say I made you a son of God too. Didn't I say in the same scripture that you say you love and read all the time that I said you are God? So why are you so upset because I say I'm a God? I'm God. And I am the Father I want. Didn't I say you are God too? That in the same scripture that you say that you love and you read every day? That's how confused they were. 
double-minded. He was confirming what David had declared hundreds of years before. So to recap, if we men would give ourselves to God through His Spirit in Christ and truly study the knowledge given in His Word of what that means, we would experience heaven on earth as the Father has always desired for us, His family. What is about all of that stuff that God did and told us about. You see, when he gave us all that scripture about the age of life, all he was telling us was, look here, this is what you are not to do. He was saying, you see this? Don't do this. That's what all that was about. All of that Old Testament was God saying, you see here? This is how you cannot be returned to me. Remember, they kept worshiping idols. God, God sold them to, into, into slavery right back into the same thing he brought them out of in Egypt. He sold them back there themselves. And they still kept worshiping idols and false stuff. He was telling us, you see this? Don't do it. That's why he couldn't give them salvation because they never believed. In order for you to receive salvation, you have to believe in him. The Israelites never truly believed in him. Even though they followed him, or they, they followed him, yeah. You know why? Because they were scared of him. If someone doing the kind of things that God was doing, opening up the earth and swallowing thousands of you, what did you do what he said? <laughs> but when it comes to their spirituality, their religiosity, they still believe in the gods they left behind in Egypt. Remember now, they were in Egypt. When they went into Egypt, they did believe in their, their, their ancestors, Jacob, also known as Israel, who, who the, the nation of Israel was named after, he believed in God, he knew God, you know, from his grandfather, okay, Abraham. But after that 400, remember, he, he died long before, after, you know, they were there for 400 years in Egypt, okay? So by the time the Israelites left Egypt, they had no clue as to who God was. Remember, even Moses didn't know who God was. Remember, he had, he had to ask God, well, God, who shall I say is sending me? God has said to them, tell them, I am the sending me. He had no idea who God truly was. He thought he had heard about this God. But remember now, Moses himself grew up in Pharaoh's palace. So he himself, for probably all of his young life, was, was worshiping idols himself. How could he not? He was in the palace all of his life until that moment when he left. And the Israelites were in Egypt for 400 years. The only thing they really knew were the, uh, the, the gods of Egypt, false gods. So when they left, they carried those little statuettes with them. They kept them in their tents, and they would worship them, even though they were, and God knew, you know. God knew the whole time. But see, God knew that he was, he was gonna have to unwash them, their brains. They had already been brainwashed. God said, these are my people. I've chosen them. I'm going to work on them. And that's, what, that's why he was so angry with Moses and Moses struck the rock instead of speaking to it. Because he wanted Moses to demonstrate to the people an act of faith. And Moses didn't do that. And that caused Moses to promise land. And his life. If God killed him. But because of that 400 years, they never was able to get rid of that false worship of idols. The whole time they were, even after they, God brought them out of the wilderness and they became a nation, they still never stopped worshiping idols. And then they had a, a line of, of wicked kings who just, Jeroboam and them, just, just, <laughs> just dragged them right into deep false worship. And then God allowed Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuchadnezzar then to just, just drag them right back into slavery. God was telling us this, listen, this is, you cannot get me like this. That covenant was not, that covenant that he gave to them was not the same covenant that he gave to Abraham. The covenant that he gave to Abraham was the covenant that Jesus gave us. It's the covenant of faith. 
the covenant that he gave the Israelites was the covenant of law. And he kept telling them after that, Jesus kept telling them too, you cannot inherit me according to the law. Because you can't keep the law. I've come to bring you a better covenant. But they couldn't receive it. Okay? So, that's what that whole Old Testament was about. But God has been trying, not trying, God has been bringing us to Him that whole time. And all of that was a lesson for us to see what not to do. He was telling us, stop worshipping traditions. Because these traditions that you worship in your church have become your idols. Bowing the crosses and, 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 and burning incense and, 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 and stuff like that. Holy communion. and conf Listen to me. He's saying, you have now been worshipping these things instead of using them only as a way of remembering what I did. Now you're worshipping these things. He said, don't worship these things. He said, they are just symbolic of me. But instead of worshipping him and just, you know, concentrating on him, we are concentrating more on the traditions that we do in church. I know I'm, I'm probably offending some of you right now. Listen, I came from a Catholic church. And the Catholic church has been going through a lot of upheaval because of these things. God is a jealous God. Worship only me, he said. Only me. He said, don't even worship any graven image of me. Even though it's of me. And you're using it as an image of me because you're saying it represents... He said, don't do that. Don't even worship any graven image of me. Nothing. He said, because you don't even say, why? He said, listen, the things I used back in the law were for symbolic of me because I had not come here. He said, but now I'm here. I'm with you. Worship me in spirit and in truth. Not with things. Worship me with your heart. Not with traditions. And some of you even worship in the church itself, the building. Be careful. You see, that's why he took us out of the church during the same COVID exercise. You see, you gotta show up. So what you can do now, he said, you can't even go in your church with your, with your worship. Spend all that money in there. Now you can't even go in there. So what you can do now? This was another lesson. See, you got to be able to tell what God is doing. He was saying, you see, now you can't go in there. What you got? You still got me? And we've had to make adjustments to, to, to worship without that building. It, it shakes us up and makes us real, realize. And there's some people who never got over that, you know. They still pining to go back in that building. And some people couldn't uh, 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 brought people back, even, you know. Anyway. Choose ye this day to do what's right. God or not? God or not? God or faith? God or your money? God or your idol? God or your values? God or your husband or your wife or your pastor or your church or your money? You choose. Okay? I pray that you will make the right choice, that you will choose God himself and worship Him alone in spirit and in truth. Okay? So God bless you. I had a good time with you today. Forgive me for the... <laughs> you know, this is real for me now. You know, but God bless you. I pray that you have a good day. And like I said, sorry I, I, I'm, I'm sending you this stuff late. I, I know I have no live viewers right now because they didn't even know I was going to do it. I didn't even know I was going to be able to get on. But I just wanted to do it. I didn't want to be too far behind Sunday, which is my regularly broadcast day, 4 o'clock every Sunday. So I'm going to send this out now to all of my groups, and I'm going to boost it so 
people around the world can, can get it. And be blessed. And I want you to watch it several times and get the true understanding of what I'm saying here. Okay? Don't rush yourself through it. Take your time with it. Listen to it carefully and be blessed. Okay? And God bless you. You have a wonderful day. I know I will. I feel like I've done something good here. And God is going to bless me for it. I know that. He always does. Okay? And God's going to bless you too. If you are obedient to his word. So God bless you. Enjoy your day. Y'all be safe out there. And remember, wear your mask. Wash your hands. Observe your distance. Be good to yourself and your neighbors. Okay? I love y'all. Take care. See you Sunday. Bye-bye.